Ladies and gentlemen, you already know who this is, man. I stay stopped, man. I don't stop on that grind, man. Welcome back to the Lewis Basketball Network. It is your boy, Lewis, and I am back once again with another banger with yet another video. Make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to always keep receiving the latest content I truly provide. Truly appreciate you guys for taking the time to watch my videos, man. And make sure at the end of each video, make sure to share this video. Only helps the channel grow. Truly appreciate it, guys, man. I hope everyone is having a wonderful afternoon. And let's get right into this topic. So, sorry about the radio, guys. But, uh, anywho, Steven Jackson, once again, shows up on FS1 Undisputed, Skip Shannon, and Jenny Taft. I'm going to say this once again, and I told you this about four or five videos ago, Shannon Sharp. I mean, Shannon, excuse me, not Shannon Sharp. Captain Jack, Stephen Jackson, a.k.a. Stax. If you don't change your mind and stop the nonsense that you spew today on FS1 Undisputed, talking about how people are coming after LeBron's neck for telling the truth, my friend, your license, your NBA card, from this day forward, will be will be removed, it'll be revoked, and you will not get your card back until you do a Scottie Pippen and do a 360. And realize that what you're talking about is complete crap. You understand me? Are we clear? Do we understand each other? Because this better be the case. Because I'm not going to have the fact that you continuously going to talk about how your team Kobe, if a team Kobe... But then say that LeBron James is being wrongfully attacked and that everybody's coming at him with all this fake news and talking about how he's not a good teammate. Like, it's already proven that LeBron James is not a great teammate. He's for himself, my friend. It's been proven. You can see his actions on the court and listen to his comments every time he comes out on the media. Every time he does a post-game interview. He, every time he does a pre-game. When he's in practice. Just watch how he articulates himself. Captain Jack, you should know better than anybody. You've been saying LeBron controls the narrative. You've been saying that LeBron is not on the level of Jordan and Kobe. You said that he doesn't have that killer, man. You just said that he doesn't have that mentality to go at guys. Like, I hate the fact that even in a newspaper article that I was reading earlier today, they were really trying to compare the competition of what Michael Jordan faced and compared to what LeBron faced. And then they were saying Michael uh, LeBron edges Michael Jordan Seven years he had tougher competition than Michael Jordan's five when a lot of it was complete bias. And I will do a detailed review on that video, you know, sometime very soon. I don't know when, but uh, when I get the details down packed, I will, you know, definitely do that video. Because when I saw the when I when I looked at the article, I just realized I said, yo, this guy is completely biased. And I said, when I look at the years and I said, look, I could tell you that this year was even tougher for, for MJ than it was LeBron. And it's, it's so crazy that at the end of the at the end of the article, he said that LeBron is playing in the friend. He's playing in the friends era, in the player movement era and the players in the super teams era. I said, wait a minute. I said, you're not going to slide this one by me. I said, please. LeBron James started the player movement prime super team era. What are you talking about? Fulfilling more narratives to try to protect your boo LeBron James at any cost. Because in your minds, he can do absolutely nothing wrong. LeBron is such an angel. LeBron is the perfect humanitarian. That's what LeBron James is. And Steve Jackson want to sit there, sit down here and talk about all, oh, well, you know, that. Oh, you know, they're talking about how LeBron's not a good teammate and how LeBron tried to orchestrate a trade this. And it's like, what more does he want to do? And Shannon Sharp over here talking about. And he's like, oh, you talk about that he declining, but he's still giving you 28 A and A. And Skip called him out real quick and he said, Shannon, he said, those don't have any impact. Skip, Skip watches my videos because, ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what I've been saying. His numbers bear no impact. I hate when people come at me and say, oh, well, LeBron, if LeBron is declining in year 16, why is he giving me 28 points, eight rebounds, eight assists? You don't know what you're talking about. You're just a hater, and you obviously don't know basketball. I don't know basketball. Apparently, you take the stat sheets, and you put them right in front of you and say, oh, this is why LeBron is the greatest player of all time, because look what he did in the stat sheet. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is called 
the eye test. And when I watch the games, I can tell, I can tell, I can pinpoint, I study specifically that LeBron James's rebounds and assists are completely overrated and the way he scores his points. He recognizes certain situations in the game. That is how LeBron's numbers look that inflated. It's a reason why LeBron is in the top 10 all time in assists. He didn't get it really through ball movement. He got it because of his system. LeBron is ball dominant. He's been that way throughout his career. It's so crazy how Chris Broussard constantly comes out here and says, oh, you know, I, 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 I want to see LeBron be in the post more if he's in the post more. I said, I think LeBron could be able to um, do some things offensively and really be able to take care of his body. And then he came on in, uh, in the earlier video, as you guys saw, and then he was like telling Nick Wright. Nick Wright said, you know what LeBron needs to do? He needs to be LeBron. Squidward, that stupid idiot, sounding like Patrick Starfish over here. LeBron has been playing, trying to play this way this entire season. So basically by you saying that, you tried to, you made an excuse as to say, well, LeBron has been trying to play off the ball and Luke Walton doesn't know what he's doing because he doesn't understand that LeBron needs to be effective in the LeBron James system. Look how you contradicted and you plot twisted that, that little narrative there. You think I didn't catch that? So Nick Wright came in up with an April Fool's joke and it wasn't even that good because he couldn't even hide it real well. And yeah, Captain Stax is making all these excuses for LeBron. And I'm like, dude, the issue is not if LeBron is not a great player. The issue is how many narratives he likes to control. And when things are his fault, he doesn't take accountability. And the LeBron stands along with the 3-6 Mafia. And now, to a certain degree, you, sir, are giving him passes. And you're saying, oh, I love how the players called out LeBron James. Um you know, for uh, for what happened this season. And it's like, I'm glad they stood up to him because nobody could say anything. Well, that was also part of the issue. It's like LeBron does not want anybody to challenge him. He doesn't want anybody to challenge him. It's you have to listen to exactly what he says. And if you even th if you would think about even slowly or even in a small little bit, try to challenge him is when he's going to get the organization to come on his back. And then say, it's not me, it's him, because he won't listen to what I have to say. It's like, yo, can't you see that I'm the best player on this team and in the world in the game of basketball? Like, that's, that's, that's what LeBron's going to keep spewing out of his mouth. Whether he does it passive-aggressively, whether he does it subliminally. It's like, you got to look at LeBron's body language. And they're like, oh, instead, Cap and Stephen Jackson's like, oh, I'm glad that they called LeBron out, you know, for his body language and stuff like that. And... And then Shannon making excuses about, oh, that's how the way about how LeBron has really much always been. You know, you're going to get this passive aggressive. And Nick Wright was saying the same thing. I said, this is why you tox the toxic 3-6 mafia MFers are never going to get a clue and understand that you are just as big of a reason why LeBron ain't winning and why people have slowly turned their heads and not like him. That's what I find ridiculous from y'all, man. And now Captain Jack here trying to make excuses. Bruh. Nah. Nah. He ain't getting a pass. He's not getting a pass. Because Chris Broussard this morning turned around and looked at Nick Wright and said, Oh, he said, But we you 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 knew that the you know that the Lakers weren't gonna make, you know, they won't they weren't gonna win a championship. And he was like, No, no, no. He's like, because we knew this year was a wash. You no, know, we knew this year was an experimental year. The same Chris Broussard that said the Lakers were gonna make the Western Conference Finals and challenge the Warriors. And they even did it by a game by game basis. So they were pretty much judging LeBron's legacy, you know, then. So that so they were prisoners of the moment too. And Chris Carter needs to get out, get off of TV. Nick Wright needs to go back to the Krusty Krab. Chris Broussard needs to go back to Cleveland. And Steven Jackson needs to be off of TV for a while. Like, I'm gonna remove his TV license. I'm gonna revoke his card and said, dude, you don't need to show up on TV for a bit. No, not until you come back and you spit some, you spit the actual facts. Talking about keeping it in 100. What I will respect you for, um, Captain Jack, is how you paid homage to Nippy Hustle. And once again, rest in peace to Nippy Hustle, man. That dude was doing some really big things. Um, I hate the fact that he got shot in his uh, in the front of his own clothing store. Um, he was He's one of the few rappers I know that was really making a positive influence in the community. Um, and... 
you know, for his life to end the way that it did is, is truly sad. Um, and it's even worse when you get, when you pass away, when you die and you have a family left behind and now they have to figure out how to move on without you. I mean, I know life goes on, but it's like those first initial months and year and couple of years are the, they're like the most difficult time knowing that now, oh, I'm going to grow up without, you know, without my father, without daddy. So, um, you know, it, it, so, you know, rest in peace to Nippy Hustle. And, I, and I'm glad Stephen Jackson started off the show by acknowledging his death. Um, you know, and my prayers go out to him and his family, of course. But uh, I'm sorry, man. Stephen Jackson needs to get his license revoked, man. And I'm about to do it. Brother, I'm giving you one more chance. One more. I said last video, I said that if you don't change, but I'm giving you one more chance. Because Shannon is... You know, talking about how now Zion Williamson doesn't need to be compared to LeBron. Like, wow, he's getting, he's, Zion's getting so much hate from him. And it's just because I get it. You want to keep LeBron as relevant as possible. You just want us to keep sniffing that LeBron, per, the, 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 the perfume, the, the toxic perfume. You just want to keep, keep smelling, smelling that. You want us to keep sweating that, you know, keep sipping that Le Juice, you know? That LaShane is trying to sell out, man. Listen, a man who wears PJs of another man pictured on his pajamas, pictured on his sheets, and pictured on his bed, I will never take seriously. So, Shannon, you're a funny guy. You entertain me, and I crack up every time you speak on TV. When you talk about any other topic other than basketball and LeBron James, sir, you know your stuff. It's when it comes to basketball and LeBron James. You don't know Jack. Shh. Steven Jackson, I respect you a lot. Captain Jax, one of my favorite guys to listen to when you keep it 100. But I'm going to tell you right now. You better stop your foolishness because you're going to look really stupid. And I'm going to expose your hard body if you don't cut the crap. LeBron James has gotten hated in his career. But he's gotten so much love, so it balances it out. Don't be trying to say that his hate is more than his love, because his love is just as big as his hate. I want to recognize LeBron for his greatness, which I make it super hard. Talking about how, oh, oh, you know, you, you instead of talking about James Harden's 50-point triple-double, we're talking about how what players need to, need to come in to help LeBron James. Steph Curry... Five straight, eight straight games with five threes, and we're talking about how pretty much how instead of that, we're talking about how you know how LeBron had his physical therapist put on Instagram of how LeBron needs to LeBron should have stayed out for six months, or oh, or oh, we don't talk about how. Let's see why I think Giannis should be the MVP over James Harden, or why James Harden should be the MVP over Giannis, or why the Thunder have started promising and then they're now a lower seed. But we want to talk about how, you know, why Luke Walton should be fired and why the roster needs an overhaul. Or let's talk about how the San Antonio Spurs and the Clippers where the one seed traded Tobias Harris and then they get Zubox and Magic trade Zubox to the Clippers and all of a sudden the Clippers are the fifth seed in San Antonio who was not even a playoff team by Christmas time are now in the playoffs or Christos Porzingis' allegations that have made headlines but we want to talk about LeBron James or how the Auburn Tigers upset the Duke Blue Devils but we want to talk about LeBron James or how Michigan State upset Kentucky. No, wait. Michigan State upset Duke, sorry. And Auburn upset Kentucky. But yeah, we want to talk about is LeBron James. We don't talk about Mike Trout's $430 million contract or Bryce Harper's 13 year, $330 million contract, man. But no, we want to talk about is LeBron James. This is exactly what that KD, K, 
KD Trey Five was talking about up there in Golden State. That's what he was talking about. Those these fanboys. The La Toxic 3-6 Mafia. The La 3 and 6 on James is the topic of discussion. At the end of the season, we're talking to talk about, oh, what if LeBron had never gotten injured? The Lakers would probably be in the fourth seed right now. And they would probably be facing a Portland Trail Blazers or whatever team that ends up ends up as the fifth spot. Or the Western Conference Finals could have been preserved for LeBron James because we had expectation that he would make it there. But you just say that this year was a wash. You started with championship, Western Conference Finals. Are they even a playoff team? Uh-oh, they might be back and uh, start upsetting some people because I trust them against the Denver Nuggets. And now, now it's it was an experimental year. Really? Really? All these other teams had injuries around the league, man. That's why LeBron was was prepping his guys so hard to play play well, so he could trade their asses, so he could trade them. <laughs> like, what kind of team? What kind of teammate does that? I mean, that's not a great teammate. That's somebody who's really self centered and really cares about themselves. That's just that's just. Pretty much really poor articulation on LeBron James' part. Another thing, you're telling me that why is it that Rich Paul has so much influence in the NBA? He shouldn't. But yet he has all this all this influence and power to have players signed to your brand so that LeBron has a chance to play with them. Oh, yeah, but, you know, LeBron's doing an amazing job emphasizing player and power movement. I told you that player and power movement bit him in the backside of the butt with a sudden no shine. It bit him there. This is what also is getting me ridiculous about Steven Jackson. And it's getting me tired about and, and Shannon Sharp talking about how LeBron is 17 and five against Kevin Durant. He owns KD. He beat KD so bad in the 2012 finals that it made KD go to the Golden State Warriors. First of all, a 17-5 and regular season record doesn't mean a damn thing if you don't meet in the playoffs. How many times has LeBron met KD in the playoffs? Only three times. For what reason? Because Kevin Durant has played his whole career in the Western Conference. Just like, oh, LeBron is 16-6 and against Kobe. He owned Kobe, yo. He gave Kobe, he be, he gave Kobe beyond the Chris Charles two-piece. How many times has LeBron and Kobe Bryant met in the playoffs? They never met. So what does 16-6 and six mean if they haven't met in the postseason? And the two times that LeBron was supposed to meet Kobe back-to-back years, he failed to show up. Mark Jackson clearly kept saying in that 2010 Eastern Conference semifinals that LeBron was not being aggressive in the last three games of the series. He kept saying it. We didn't, a lot of people didn't see it at the time. But we see it now. When you're looking at LeBron's career these last couple of years, and it's like, whoa, wait, is it possible as to why LeBron possibly went to South Beach? It's like you think about all of these circumstances and all of these, you, you start reflecting. You're like, wow, everything is coming full circle now. Like, I, I was wondering why all of this came to. So it's like, okay, LeBron beat KD in five games with James Harden didn't show up. You're telling me he beat him so bad that. Oh, he he knocked them five years later into joining the Golden State Warriors. Cut it out, man. 2016, Draymond Green was suspended, but I said the biggest impact was Bogut's injury. Also, the play of Kyrie Irving when the Cavaliers looked dead in the water. I just named you three different factors right there that helped change the momentum of that NBA Finals when Golden State was up three games to one. And the championships canceled each other out because y'all keep saying LeBron came back from 3-1, but want to use the 2015 excuse of Kyrie and Kevin Love was hurt when you got when you guys have been the same people that have called those guys trash. Which one is it? That's why again, you cannot be using a 17 and 5 record with KD if you have only met three times in the playoffs. You cannot use a 16 and 6 record against Kobe if you've never met in the postseason. Regular season records don't mean a goddamn thing unless you meet in the playoffs, head-to-head. 
and LeBron has faced a combined Kobe and KD, the two Ks, a total of three times in its one and two against that KD three five up there in Golden State. Oh, but Lewis, you're not going to mention the fact that Kevin Durant had a 3-1 lead on the Warriors and then he lost it and then he joined them? Everybody knows that. And I said that it was the weakest move in NBA history. I said it was the weakest move. But what y'all want to do is y'all want to focus on that but not realizing that the original snake is LeBron James. Because his buddy Rich Paul has his clutch sports investment company in the NBA. So he's tampering and colluding and they've been trying to do it for years. Come on, dog. LeBron wants to be the mainstay. Look, he's getting his he's getting his childhood lover boy over here trying to do all the work so he could get all the credit at the end of the day. So then they could be like, yo, LeBron was the reason that I won a championship. Yo, he told me, yo, you come here, man. He said, I'm gonna treat you like a I'm going to treat you like a bro, man. I'm going to treat you like a brother, like a banana bow buddy, man. You're going to see we're going to win together, and I'm going to get all the credit, man, and you ain't going to get jack, shit, jack jack nothing. All you got to do is just do the work, man, to say that, yo, you was balling, but I'm going to get all the credit, man, because I made it happen because I brought you here. See, I got this vision. And LeBron's been using all of that along with his, along with his off-the-court stuff that his fans love to bring up to say, MJ never supported the community. As I say, he's better than Jordan because of his off-the-court stuff. Off-the-court and on-the-court are two different things. You can't put on that to say one player is better than the other because of uh, off-the-court stuff. Stop it. As an individual basketball player, Michael Jordan is better than LeBron James. Fanboys, get over it. Get over it. And Michael has too many records that LeBron James ain't even going to sniff by the time his career is over. Nobody's saying that LeBron isn't great. What angers me is the amount of excuses you give for him every single time of his failures. Not the team's failures, not the other individual players' failures, not the owner's failures, not the GM's failures, not the coach's failures, assistant coaches, trainers, or whatever. His failures. When he does something wrong, he doesn't he, he didn't do anything wrong. We we gotta give him a pass. Because it's not fair. Y'all just attacking LeBron James. LeBron James can stand right there. Let a guy drive by him. He makes a face at a teammate on his assignment. But we got to get mad at the teammate for LeBron not doing his job. Well, it makes perfect sense because you've been brainwashed and have too much of LeBron's nuts hanging from your mouth, slapping your chin. Drip wet. That's the problem. I want to say great things about LeBron James, but him controlling narratives makes it too difficult. The three the, controlling the narratives, the La Three Six Mafia with the le, with the le excuses. His La Trainer going on La Instagram, talking about he should have been he he shouldn't have been playing for six months. His La stories have been La inconsistent, or should I say La consistent actually. His stories are less consistent. Spewing la nonsense. So Steven Jackson, I ask you again. No, I'm not asking you. I'm tell I'm la telling you. Stop coming on these shows making excuses for LeBron James talking about that. How it's it's really unfair that now everybody's coming with a story. No. If you see the entire season, this was on LeBron. This was on Magic. Magic listened to LeBron and what the players he wanted. Magic brought them in. Magic Johnson came on TV and told reporters that LeBron is going to have influence in the decisions he makes. Why does LeBron deserve to get that power? He comes on a historic franchise like that and all of a sudden he gets to make the decisions? Why? Because he's LeBron James? And that's why I told Jeannie Buss, you allowed this crap to happen because you should have took control. LeBron cannot be bigger than the Lakers organization. The historic players that have played for this franchise and for this clown to come one year and discontinue to control narratives. Dude, play basketball. Do your damn job. Incorporate your teammates. Be quiet. And just try to help these guys win. They looked at you as the leader of the team. And instead of leading, oh, I got to lead these young guys, man. You know, I got to set the example for my teammates. You know, I would never throw teammates on the bus. You say all that. 
and you come out on the floor and you play your little LeBron James system, you choose not to defend, you got pushed by Kyle Kuzma, you, you don't box out, you let your defense do all the dirty work so you could get those open rebounds that are on the frown to say, oh, look, I'm a great rebounder. Oh, LeBron is a great rebounder. He has 8,850 rebounders. I'm going to ask you once again, ladies and gentlemen, why does Michael Jordan have 230 more offensive rebounds than LeBron James and in less seasons if LeBron James is the better rebounder than Michael Jordan? Answer me that question. But you won't be able to because LeBron is not as great a greater rebounder as, again, he seems and even on the offensive end, LeBron doesn't really contribute like that. I've already said it, man. The XYZ selective truth overrated stats. I've already said it, man. That's all they want to do because when they know that the truth is being told, oh, oh, fourth place. You really want to go there? I'm going to murk that narrative. Oh, oh, LeBron, 28 and 8. You really want to go there? Because I'm going to murk that narrative too. You don't want to go there with me. I'm sorry. You don't want to go there. You're going to make yourself look really stupid if you really try that with me. They're not coming within the flow, man. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. You know? And so, that's exactly what I'm saying. So, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you again, man. Help me rejoice in telling Stephen Jackson... That he needs to get up on out of here with this uh with this the defense of LeBron James. Because if he doesn't stop, he's getting his license revoked at this moment. And he will no longer talk about basketball. I don't care if he's a former player. Dude, you better let Scotty Pippen and come back, come back around and face reality. Sip that reality juice, sip that truth juice, okay? The truths I'll set you free and speak facts, brother, because this, this this thing talking about that LeBron's getting wrongfully attacked and people coming from all angles and they're kicking a man while he's down. LeBron brought this on his damn self. He keeps going on TV and keeps talking and talking and talking about what he does and what he needs to do. And he doesn't go do it on the basketball court. He pads his stats and you could clearly see it. But the apologists and the LeBron fanboys don't want to see it. They choose to be ignorant and call you a goddamn hater. They call you a hater when you critique his acumen, when you can clearly see it on the court. You can clearly see LeBron standing there. Doesn't put doesn't doesn't attack the offensive glass. You can clearly see him being stationary on the defensive end. You can clearly see his teammate push him to close out to the shooter. But you're a damn hater. This is why I laugh in your faces and say you guys don't know basketball. You're so infatuated with your fanboyism. That's right, fanboyism. I'm going to repeat again with your fanboyism that is too blind, that is blinding you from seeing the truth. You don't want to clean your ears to un- make you understand. You don't want to listen and you don't want to see with your eyes. See and listen with your eyes to tell you that LeBron James is the first ballot Hall of Famer. I didn't say he wasn't. Once again, I had him in the top, I had him in the top 10, but I got to take him out of the top 10 after what I've seen. Right now, I said, man, his system has won three championships, but it's given him six finals losses, man. I keep saying it. So the 3-6 Mafia wants to keep talking about LeBron James. Well, I'm going to keep looking up stats to prove that as great as LeBron James is, he's not as good as people keep claiming he is. So let me know what you guys think if you guys want me to keep bringing out the facts on LeBron James. Like, just let me know if you guys want me to do that. Um, I will say I give LeBron James credit for shouting out Nippy Hustle, though. Like, you know, he does it on Instagram. I'm not going to attack him because he went on Instagram, even though that's one of his biggest problems, because he's talking about young generation being on social media, but he's addicted himself. That's why I said LeBron is his own biggest weakness, and he doesn't even realize it. So he better take a hard, long, hard look in the mirror and really think this season, and he better change himself to be a great teammate because Laker fans... They're already pissed off about this season, man. If year two doesn't pan out, because look at the standard that we're talking about now. We're talking about making the playoffs. That's that's the goal. 
And watch, if the Lakers somehow get a very good player where their roster looks really good, people are going to say they're a championship team. You're going to see. And they're going to say, well, last year's team wasn't really a championship team. You see how they're going to change and move the goalposts? And, I, and, and this is why I said, I said it. I'm going to move the goalposts for LeBron James. You better deliver a championship in year two. After the, listen, failure is a nice word for the word fiasco. Because this was a fiasco. So I'm going to move the book goalposts and I'm going to say this, LeBron. You better win a championship in year two. All these Lakers fans are going to run you out of town. The ones that know your complete BS that you brought to Staples Center. Because we know that you're worried about business, you're worried about your brand, and you're worried about after basketball. Because if you would have came to win, you would have not been trying to control narratives and you would have tried to play basketball and you tried to be a team player and listen to Luke Walton. You didn't listen to Luke Walton the entire year. All of a sudden, you're going to say, oh, you know, I listen to Luke. And the reason that you listen to him is because you know he's going to get fired. But they want Ty Lue. Wow, what, what geniuses are they are. Nick Wright, Shannon Sharp, Colin Cowherd, and to a certain degree, Steven Jackson. Y'all full of it. Jax, there is still time to change. It is never too late. You better get your mind right. That annoying ass CC Chris Carter, Mr. Oh, uh, Mr. Chris. Oh yeah, I knew LeBron, man, because you know, when he was in, you know, I used to take him to daycare four times a week. Or yeah, I knew LeBron because, you know, I, I you know, I met his mom in high school, man. What a what a sweet lady she was. Oh, maybe he was part of that collusion, one of the people that she messed with. That's how you know LeBron personally, right, Cece? All right? Because you know, you know him. I, I I spoke to Zion a few times, you know, when he you know, he was he was just starting to come up going to college. You know, I think he's a really good kid. Cece, Mr. Chris knows everybody Carter. A toxic ass <laughs> environment. This little environment is la cancerous, man. I tell you. His la legacy is gonna mean la nothing. And it's gonna take la hits if he doesn't get his act together and uh do year two. Because even in the last six games, he's not playing. Come on, man. Rondo had 24 and 12. JaVale McGee had 23 and 13. These guys can play, man. They can play. Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma showed really nice growth. But according to Nick Wright, it was like, you know, they didn't, they really didn't show it. The young guys really didn't show anything. What? And we didn't get to see LeBron with the young core. Uh, we didn't get to see what those guys developed. But you were trying to get them traded. You were yelling at Ty Lue to get traded, and he's he's clueless, and Ty Lue needs to get fired. All of a sudden, now Ty, Ty Lue is the perfect man for the job because he understands LeBron and the style of play and with the players. Come on, dude. Full of la garbage. Squidward, I'm going to say it again. Go back to Bikini Bottom and go back to the Krusty Krab, man, where you belong. Stand at the cash register and look nice and let the other players in the ear, the La SpongeBob's out here, Make them Krabby Patty burgers to satisfy the customers. You just stand there and look as clueless as you always do with that big nose of yours. <laughs> Stupid. But anyway, this is your boy Lewis with another one, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. As always, man, bless up. One love. Peace. Thanks for watching.